August 27, 1935, when James Christensen was born. And certainly the musical stars must have been alive. There's not much written about Jim's early years. The Egyptians hadn't invented papyrus or writing yet. <laughs> but to be sure, Jim was an early talent musically. He played trombone and rather well, graduated from the University of Wisconsin, and as one of their favorite prodigies, he was asked to come back and direct their marching band. The band never sounded better than they did with Jim at the helm. I don't think there's a better known fight song anywhere. <laughs>
chose my path and it was in the mid-60s as the director of the University of Wisconsin Marching Band that Jim found himself in Pasadena in the Tournament of Roses Parade. Some folks from the Disney organization were there and were, of course, significantly impressed. So Jim was subsequently asked to join them as the director of the Disneyland Band and supervisor of music for Disneyland. Now we could probably stop right there to say the rest is history. But it's so much better to hear some more of Jim's music. Jim replaced a man named Bessie Walker, who was the band director at Disneyland. Now Walker was hired as the first band director for a two-week stint. They didn't think it would go past that. Uh, but after all the years that Bessie was there, Jim replaced him, and that was about 1968. And until his final retirement in 2010, Jim wrote, arranged, directed, managed, and orchestrated so much of what we have come to know and identify with Disney. He traveled extensively, sharing the Disney sound with the world. And as a tribute to the global appeal and success of Disney music and Jim's hand in it, it's Disney around the world.
remember his first day uh, leading the band, but I remember Jim strutting down Main Street, uh, leading the band in Town Square, whether it was for uh, retreat ceremony or for a uh, morning concert uh, in Town Square. Uh, but he certainly uh, did a great job in uh, the sounds of, uh, of his music and Disneyland music uh, in those two uh, venues. Ron, we thank you so much for sharing with us today some of the ways that uh, Jim was there with you and making an impact here in Southern California with his music. Well, it's my pleasure, and, and Jim is a wonderful person, and uh, I admire anybody that has the talents and the ability to create uh, the fine arts type of uh, entertainment. Uh, Jim certainly uh, has made a great contribution to, to Disney, uh, to other venues uh, around the country, uh, to Villa Park High School, to the local community, and uh, I congratulate him for this uh, tribute to him uh, at this time. Rod Dominguez, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. wrote for concert bands. Let's take a moment and look at his work in the jazz field, or as it used to be called, stage bands. I think Jim and I are the only two old enough to remember that. <laughs> Jim collaborated with Bobby Christian and Mark McDunn on a six-month two-record project called That's It. They cranked out 20 charts covering the full spectrum of jazz. We're proud to have the Villa Park Community Band here, and more about Jim's involvement with community bands later as they play the title chart, That's It. Thank you. 
Jason was also on this project, and tonight we feature bass player Jeff Schultz. And like so many others, Jeff has a chip. I thought I made a mistake, but I was wrong. <clears throat> I uh, kind of talk about a mistake that happened a long time ago. It was set the Wayback Machine for 1978 location right here at Villa Park High School in the band room. I was in the 12th grade and Major Jay was the band director. You do the math. <laughs> A buddy of mine and I were having lunch in the band room like we normally do, and Mr. Christensen walked in and presented an opportunity for us to audition for a talent show that was being held at Disneyland. So my buddy and I took him up on it, we went down and did the audition. We went in, um, and right off the bat, my buddy was accepted and I was eliminated, so that's kind of how it was. But because I gave my buddy a ride, I was the one with the car, I had to wait around until he was done so I could give him a ride home. Well, after two hours of auditions, and they sent most everybody packing, uh, they invited everybody back they'd asked to stay to go back in and talk about the show. Well, I wasn't asked to stay, I was just kind of waiting for my buddy to be done. After everybody marched into the room, Jim sticks his head out in the hall and says, well, are you coming in or not? I didn't argue. <laughs> so I walked in, and uh, as it turned out, they eliminated all the bass players, and I ended up getting the spot by, uh, by default. <laughs> I just want to express my appreciation to you, because if back then, if you hadn't made that little mistake when I was standing in the hall, I may not have become the bass player that's standing in front of you today. Thank you. I wanted to uh, make a side point of, uh, as well as the, um, if you've seen some of the Disney movies like uh, Mr. Magoo or Rocket Man or some of the uh, cartoon shows like um, Cusco's New School or Lilo and Stitch, you'll notice in the credits it says music by Mike Tavera. Uh, Mike was that buddy I was mentioning that went with me to the auditions. So just wanted to point out that I wasn't the only one that was touched by Jim's golden fingers.
trombone section seems to dominate my chip gym repertoire. <laughs> well, we're privileged tonight to have members from one of the premier trombone ensembles with us, founded in 1980 by bass trombonist George Roberts. Would you please welcome Bones West as they take the stage up here? Version of Bones West, I think we're up to 70 trombones. And we're going to do a number with them now, one of Jim's compositions called Trombone Country. It's a cute little country two step. <laughs>
We have a few songs we'd like to play for you tonight. The third, first one is called Just In Time, arranged by uh, James Christensen. in our book that we use. Uh, we use every rehearsal and we use it every one of our concerts. We're very grateful to him for his contribution to Bones West. Um, we have one more tune we'd like to play for you. Uh, it's entitled Half Snow and uh, again one of uh, James Christensen's wonderful arrangements. Thank <laughs> you. 
Christensen sound is synonymous with the music of America, the music that gets your toes tapping and your heart done. Well, if Harold Hill would be the music man for that little town of River City in Iowa, then Jim Christensen is America's music man. Jim, for all of your talent and your music, your support and continued service, for all the joy you've brought to us here at Villa Park and around the world, thank you. And it's showtime, two, three, four. Philharmonic Society of Orange County's school programs. And so I've been into every school in Orange County, the new ones, the old ones, uh, the not quite done ones. And ironically, <clears throat> this year our series ends in March. And where am I going to be on March 13th? But right at Sierra Villa, where Serrano will come that great school will come over and hear our concert, and then we will travel to Villa Park Elementary for another concert, and then we will go to California grade school. And it just is ironic that I'm ending up right here in my hometown. And incidentally, I'm going to play this Pickle O'Reilly because you know March 13th is right before St. Patrick's Day. So without any further ado, thank you for being here. It's great to see a great audience. Thank <laughs> you. 
very musical family, as you can tell. We're glad to have them as part of our Villa Park family. Dear Mark, it's great admiration for your talent, your support, your contributions to the music of America have no bounds. But we would be honored and pleased if you would accept a small token of our appreciation, probably long overdue. It's your very own Philip Park High School Varsity Chapter. Thanks again, James Christensen. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.